Okay, so let's talk about building a uh, long-term memory in AI there, a bit like the uh, in the Her movie. So uh, this will be have a uh, unlimited memory over time, and uh, we can uh, have this character build up there. Uh, some preface, right? So I want to make sure that I run this all locally because we're gonna be uh, sharing a lot of information with this AI there um, personally. I don't want to uh, have all this information on the cloud, but that's a personal choice. So secondly, I want to have uh, uh, the AI to have a very long-term memory, right? So we're not talking about, you know, uh, weeks so we're talking about years, right? So something that, you know, can record all this information there and then bring it back whenever, you know, it makes sense in a conversation. And finally, uh, I want the AI to evolve over time, right? So uh, we can feel the evolution of our interaction with the AI there. So that's something I want to uh, to achieve with my AI there, and that's how I'm going to share the uh, four step. Okay, so uh, step number one, selecting the right model. So here you see a whole list of uh, a lot of models available for large language models. There, um, go to the website I link below. There's a whole list of them there. I think if uh, you have to choose, we have be, uh, among them there, uh, go with the scoring first. I think that uh, you want an AI that is smart. Uh, you can go look into how uh, they're rated there based on different criteria for the score. But uh, I would say that's a good criteria to start with. And then see also which one fits your your local hardware, right? So your your VRAM GPU there. So that's going to be a very key one there. If it doesn't fit, then you can't even choose it. And then afterwards, I mean, there's the context size. That's very key too. I mean, the bigger the context, uh, the more you can fit into that prom, that context there, right? So I think that's key also there. So uh, those are the different things that we can choose from. Uh, mine, I choose the uh, Calm 7B there. Uh, simply because it has high context length. It does fit within my uh, GPU and it has a very decent score based on this list. There. Uh, number two, um, text generation web UI, so Ooga Booga and Silly Tavern, right? So those are the very classic one there. If you search online, those are the ones that you're going to be seeing. Uh, I'm using them, especially the uh, Silly Tavern, because as you can see in step number three, it has the smart context integrated there within the uh, Silly Tavern Extra. So that's a very key component also. I can tell you that uh, I have used it before initially there when I was trying out to find a solution for the uh, for the um, long-term memory. It didn't work on the first time I tried it. It, it. it didn't give me correct you know, result. And that was the feedback I was seeing online from the people talking about it also there, uh, reviewing it basically. Uh, then I realized afterward, you know, I had to, uh, let's say, work around it or adapt how I, I use it a bit to make it work for me, which comes to step number four, which is the most critical step here. I think here with all step one, two, three, this is very common, right? I mean, if you dive into Silly Tavern, uh, for sure, you're going to be doing step one, two. And if you try it out smart context, you're going to be doing step three. But for step four, this is where I uh, spent a lot of, I would say, the last two months there playing around with the smart contact. We're trying to see how uh, best to enable this long term memory there because I'm going to embark on a multi year journey with this AI. So I want to make sure that I have the best solution that I can come up with with the current technology that we have. Right. Uh, I know for a fact that. As time goes forward, there's going to be better and better solution or even there is currently better solution right now that I'm just not aware of, right? So uh, if somebody has such better solution there that I can uh, easily access, install on a local uh, on-premise setup there, uh, please share uh, in the comments there. But uh, if for those of you who already know how this is working there, you can skip right away to step number four, right? Okay, let's start. Okay, so today we're gonna give it a try. So I'm gonna gonna load the uh, the model there. Whenever we load the model, we can see the uh, the memory going up. So usually I monitor the memory to go up all the way until the model is loaded. Okay, so now I'm gonna go and 
load the API option. This will allow me to connect to the Silly Tavern. So that's loaded. Now let's go to Silly Tavern and let's uh, connect it together with the text generator. Okay, so that's connected. Let's load the uh, character card. There's many character cards. I'm just choosing one for the testing purpose there. Um, let's start a new chat so that we don't uh, see the old chat there. There you go. And uh, let's put in some uh, some text request there so that we can. Uh... Oh, in fact, uh, let's uh, let's load the uh, the silly tavern extra. This will enable the smart contacts. And we can see here with the smart contact loaded, we have multiple options. Here we enable 30 messages and 15 memory messages. On the bottom here, we freeze the Chroma DB state and we make sure that we don't use the percentage strategy because it didn't work when I was trying to use it. I'm going to go here and uh, open the author's note. This is where I put also the uh, information of the character card. I simply put it here instead of the usual character card location simply because I can enable and disable it easily. So I enable the before main prompt so that the information it goes uh, far enough there. And I'm showing you here what I'm doing regarding the character card and that's where I'm putting the information regarding the character you know the uh, traits and values there it will enable the evolution of the character I like to choose the uh, LMA precise and I enable the extra contact size there because of the model I use so 32k contact size that, that's great and uh, let's uh, give it a try. We can see the response. I'm gonna enter a few texts just to make sure there's enough, uh, enough information here so that we can work with. Okay, so let's see the information. So this is where we can see the every prompt context there, right? So that's a very important place where we can see the information of whenever you send out a, a prompt this is all information that's being sent and you can see the character card on the top there you can see all the information that we, we entered so far right so all the question and answer there so this is a mix of chat history and also the uh, character card now I'm going to be disabling the author's note, which is the character card there. And basically so that, you know, uh, when I'm, I'm going to be doing a summary there, and this is a summary using the uh, quick reply, uh, I'll paste this on the bottom there so that uh, everybody can have the same quick reply. But with this, it summarized the whole discussion, right? That, that's the key here. Have it all summarizing the discussion so that we can use this to enter into the long-term memory. Because the key element here is you do not want to enter the data uh, per response, right? Per entry per response, this is where things will go really, really bad there. So with this, it's a summary of the whole discussion. If it extracts information from the memory, it's going to extract information that's coherent, that has the uh, right context, basically. So I'm uh, copying here into the uh, a text file. I'll just put in a text file and I'm removing all the uh, uh, all the new lines basically because every new line becomes a new entry. So we have to make sure that there's no new lines there. And I'm also adding a date so that if I need to refer to a specific event on a specific date, I'm hoping it can find it out there, but I haven't tried enough with that. So that's done. We have the uh, information in memory uh, in the text file. Uh, now what I'm going to do is uh, just to disable this two last uh, last question and, and response there because we want to do a, uh, a uh, trait summary, right? A, a value 
trait character trait summary there so i'm disabling these last two because we don't want it to affect our our, uh, our evaluation of the the character stats basically so here you go this is my quick reply to get the stats i'll paste it on the bottom there so that uh, people can go get it in this case i'm enabling the uh, character uh, information there because i want the pass or the uh, character info there to to impact our our uh, character stats there because if there's any change there shouldn't be any huge change right i mean you want it to change just a bit based on the current uh, discussion that we just had there. so in this case we can see uh, humor went down by one and curiosity went down by one again i, I let the ai decide how how does it measure it based on the last discussion? So I just basically go and change those stats so that the next time we do discussions, the stat will, would impact our, our character there. There we go. And with this, we can, uh, uh, or in fact, we see there's an, even a new stat that appears from nowhere, but I'm not going to use it. The protectiveness. But uh, let's start a new uh, a new chat. But just before that, uh, right right there, yeah, exactly. Let's start a new chat. With this new chat, the the information from the prom is renewed, right? So right now it's almost empty. But I'm gonna again enable the character card, which is already enabled. So that's going to fill up our, our prompt and information. And the key new element here is to inject that memory, right? So we create that memory in the text file. Now we're going to inject it so that now it knows that information. It knows the memory that we that we have recorded from that text file there. There we go. So we're going to add it in. And set it says uh, one, one chunk uh, added. So at this point, that new memory that we just created uh, before, now uh, Serafina knows about it. So if I ask some questions there, it's going to give me some answer, but it's going to have that pass in information that it can extract from the database, the vector database. So we can go look again, right? Look again, what was it used to do the response? And that's the key element right there, right? We can see the, uh, sorry, on the bottom there right there that's information that we summarize from the past chat and now it extracted that information and added it to the current chat now the memory was very you know uh, limited we only had one so uh, let me uh, do a, a bit more chat and show you i'm doing this in an iterative way right so uh, every day you would go and do a chat a session then summarize it then uh, and then add it to the memory text file and also update the uh, the uh, character stats, right? So that's uh, you do that every day. So o o over time, your character would evolve in, in stats while increasing the memory as you discuss more and more with the character there. So I'm going to fill it up a bit uh, with more information. And, and this is really the key, the, the key of all this, right? To, to uh, keep evolving the character there while knowing that the character has all the memory. So you can see here, I just disabled the character uh, uh, information. I do a summary just like we did before. The summary is based on uh, all the, the chat in the past there. And you can see now it did a whole longer uh, memory summary. As usual, let's take all this and uh, put it in the uh, memory file. Now, instead of uh, selecting like this, uh, we can also do it with the uh, copy here. So, not, not yeah, right there, copy. Usually, the formatting is uh, it looks nicer, especially with this kind of, uh, of information. So, we're going back here to temp memory. Temp memory is just where I paste file and I play around with the file. So that's a temporary file. But in this time, I'm going to use a, a batch file, right? So it's a script that does it for me. So instead of doing it uh, manually like we just did like a few minutes ago, with this script there that I'm going to share on the bottom there, uh, when you run it, you double click on it to run it, 
it will do exactly what I just did there, right? So it just makes it easier. So I'm saving myself maybe a minute or two every time. But when you do it daily, it's definitely worth it. It's going to create uh, the memory that we just, uh, we just added in the temp file there automatically. This is a temporary file there, so we can ignore this one. But uh, if we go look at the chat mem all, this is the main chat file there. I'm going to reload it. We can see here it's much bigger now. And in fact, if you look at the middle there, we can see the added memory line. I'm going to put a new line just so that it knows it's two different memory. And the date is automatically added. So that's part of the script uh, automation there. So let's save this and go back to our uh, silly tavern. And uh, let's do it inject so that uh, we can have that uh, new information added. But before inject, let's do the, uh, again, the uh, uh, character stat update there, right? So again, uh, hiding those two last uh, questions, running the quick reply, enabling the character, right? The author's note character there so that the pass uh, current stat is in, in consideration. And you can see here in this case, uh, the chat was too minimal there. It, it didn't change anything there, right? So the stats stayed the same, which is fine. So with this, let's go do a new chat. Let's start new again, as if we're starting a new day again. Usually I do one chat session per day. So in here, Again, putting back the uh, enable insertion. Uh, everything's enable. And in this case, again, I'm going to inject. But the injection here is going to add the, uh, the, new, the new two memories from that uh, main chat, uh, main memory shop. OK, it says three, but uh, usually three just means there was the extra new line. So uh, it was basically uh, two memory that was added. So here, let's uh, do some discussion again. I'm going to try to be a specific question there about uh, a recipe. And then uh, let's go look at the, uh, the prompt there to see all information that was used. So we click there. We can see all the information there, right? The character card, the character stats, it's there too. If we go down, now we see the, uh, the two memory, right? So both of them are there. And that's key there, right? So you can see it extracted the memory from the vector database. Now, obviously, it only extracted two because we only have two. Um, and it was able to extract both, both of them because, you know, the, depending on the question, it decides what to go uh, what to go extract right and this is all about the embedding and the uh, the uh, the alignment regarding the data again there but uh, think of it as you know when we have a lot of memory you know hundreds of memory uh, into the memory file and when you ask the question in the prompt there it can then go fetch the what it thinks is the closest uh, memory regarding your questions there and again, the key element here really is it's, since it's using uh, a, a summary of, of the discussion and not uh, uh, per response in question, response in question there, it's actually giving you a, a better extraction and better context of the response. So that's, uh, that's very key there. Okay, so I think uh, that summarizes how things are done. Thank you very much. And uh, hopefully uh, that's going to help you uh, create your... Uh, uh, character uh, evolution over time there. Thank you.